Hi everyone, my name is Brandon Rodriguez and I work at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. Uh, and I'm in the education department where I'm joined by my good colleague, Lyle Tavernier. And today we have a special session just for students where we are going to build a rover. Now, surely you guys have been watching along over the past two months as we've been preparing for the landing of the Perseverance rover, which successfully landed and has been driving around on the surface of Mars now. Testing has begun, we've seen mobility, we've got audio information back from its microphones, um, and soon we'll even be testing the Ingenuity helicopter. So today, what we thought we could do is look at a little bit of the engineering design process that goes into designing a successful rover. So long before we actually sent the rover, months, years of testing was performed to make sure every aspect of the rover was ready for prime time, ready to drive around successfully. So maybe we can begin today by building a small rubber band powered rover and look at some of the um, details that went into designing mobility and the wheels that we're going to use. So before we do that, let's turn it over to my awesome colleague, Lyle, who's gonna set up our challenge. Thanks a lot, Brandon. And hi everyone, my name is Lyle and I'm uh, also, working from the education office at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory here in Southern California. And I'm excited to build a rover with you today and talk about um, the rover with you today. And so this is actually a, a fun thing that we're going to do because you can build along at home or in class, wherever you might be. Uh, if you've got the supplies with you, that is fantastic. I'm going to pull up a screen where you can just take a look at some of the things that we're going to need. So if you look on the screen, we've got three pieces of cardboard, we've got two mints, we've got a straw, we've got two rubber bands, some tape, a pencil, and a ruler. I did not put scissors on there because I did not have room for the scissors, um, but if you've got scissors, uh, that would be great too. So um, if you do not have these materials and you want to do this later, you can also visit our education website where you can find the make a cardboard rover activity so you can see the uh, the page here with uh, instructions and all the materials that you're ne you're going to need so uh, you can see here they included the the scissors that i forgot to include or could not include on the screen um, but if you want to follow along later you can certainly do that we'll also be taking some questions today so uh, if you registered for this live stream you've got the link to submit questions and you can go ahead and do that. We're seeing a lot of great ones coming in. We are going to take those questions after the build so that you can focus on um, building your rovers if you're going along with us. And as Brandon is building his rover, uh, I've already got mine completed actually, you can see it right here. Um, I'll be talking about the rover that's on Mars as he's building the rover um, there in his home. So Brandon, do you wanna get started on building this rover? Let's do it, all right. I didn't know you were gonna have one done, so it looks like the, the competition has begun. So I'm going to start with uh, just kind of a longer piece of cardboard here. And this is totally up to you guys. Um, you can make your the body of your rover kind of short and small. Uh, you can make it long like a drag racer. Um, I'm gonna make mine a little bit somewhere in between. Now, as Brandon is building his rover, I'm going to pull up a picture on the screen to kind of give you an idea of where we start when we're designing these rovers. We start with just a simple sketch um, that will help us um, understand or, or think about what we want to build and how we want to build it. Um, as Brandon's designing his body of the rover, you can see in this next image how the design evolves over time as we start to understand more and more about what it is that we're going to be uh, putting onto the rover and eventually we get to a very detailed uh, design and you can see here in this image this is uh, a computer, gener computer generated design uh, that has much much more detail than, than that original um, rover sketch that I showed you first and this design the reason the body is the size that it is the shape that it is is also that it can do what we want it to be able to do. So there's a, a quite a long design process before we even start building. So Brandon, it looks like you're ready for our next step. Yeah, so what I've done is I've just taken a piece of cardboard and I've folded it up such that um, kind of into thirds. And I just took a pencil or a pen and I've very carefully 
poked a hole. Be very careful not to poke your hand. And this is going to be the rear axle of my cardboard rover. So you can see here that when I put it through, I've got kind of a, a U shape of my body. And I've got a nice sturdy rear axle in the form of a pen or a pencil. Um, after that, I'm going to put the front axle on my car, and I'm going to do that by just taking a drinking straw and two of these wonderful mints. These are not for my, my morning coffee breath. These are for my wheels on the front. Um, and I like to use the mints instead of the candy ones, just because the candy ones get sticky. And I think one time we got ants in the office, and we don't want that. Uh, so for my front axle, I'm just going to tape this onto the bottom, and I'm going to put my candied wheels onto the straw. Now, while Brandon is putting those on, one of the things that you might notice is that Brandon's rover has four wheels, and the rover on Mars has six wheels. And that, again, is part of our design. Uh, we think about what the rover has to do and how it will have to be able to move, and it turns out that six wheels on a rover driving around is really good at driving over obstacles. It's really great at um, going through tougher terrain that we might be able to, or that we might face when we're on Mars. And so having those extra wheels um, is really great. However, in this design, having six wheels would be pretty difficult. And so we, we work with a design that is only um, four wheels, and that makes it quite a bit better. So Brandon, I can see that you are getting those um, wheels taped on there, and you're, you're, you're keeping them from falling off there, correct? Yeah, so I've got my, my mint wheels on the front now, underneath the front of my rover. And just to kind of keep them secured so they don't roll off as we're testing, I kind of just bend my straws at the end, and I just kind of tape them so that there's like a little a little hubcap, if you can imagine. Now there are lots of different ways that you guys can do this, but this way kind of kind of works for me. Um, and once we've done that, now we're kind of ready for a tricky part, which is we want to make sure that we have a power system. We have a means to actually have this rover drive, and the best way to do that is with our rubber bands. So what we're going to do is. This takes a little bit of dexterity, kind of like a magic trick that I remember Lyle taught me several years ago. You're going to take two rubber bands, and you want to tie them together. Maybe, maybe a, a good way to do this, if you want to do it nice and slow, is you can kind of like sit one rubber band on top of the other ones. And if you can see, I'm going to pull through to kind of like tie a knot, like so, right? So now I've got a rubber band that is tied uh, uh, onto another rubber band. And if you can see, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to loop it onto my rear axle. Not the front axle. That straw is kind of flimsy. This nice, strong one here. Right? So I'll kind of show from this angle first. Hard to do with my big, clumsy hands. But I want to tie it a loop onto my straw like so. And now I have a means to kind of power up my rover. I'm going to hook it onto the front of my rover. How? By just cutting two little slits on the front, like so. And now you can see I've got a little place to hook my rover, uh, rubber band onto the rover. There we go. So rubber band hooks to the top, ties to the back, and now as I twist, I can actually start to wind up my rover and let it go. So I'm, I'm pretty interested to see how our rovers will compare because we're both using rubber bands as a power source, but your rubber bands look a little different than my rubber bands. And I'm even using different rubber bands on my rover today than I've used in the past. And I noticed a little bit of difference in the way that um, as I twisted that rear axle and that tension on the rubber band built up, there was, there was 
a different force uh, or, a, or a different strength, I should say. Um, and so I'm, I'm curious how yours will, will react. And that's kind of something that we have to think about when we're building the rover. Uh, how is it going, how are those wheels going to turn? How much force do they have? Uh, how quickly will they spin? Um, and I want to show you a video of our rover being assembled. This is in the clean room. You can, you can see here it's starting with, oh, I gotta, gotta hit play. There we go. You can see the wheels are being machined, so we're not using cardboard, we're using aluminum for the rover wheels. And we attach them onto the suspension system. It's called a rover, ro a ro I'm really struggling with that one today. A, boy, I, I cannot this get that one. one. It's this a is rocker. the one. Rocker bogey, thank you. Yeah. Uh, the rocker bogey system. And um, when, it's, when it's attached onto the sides, um, then we've got this rover that is ready to drive, but we've still got to do a lot of testing and we've got to get ourselves prepared for that first drive. So I'll save, I'll save our first drive video uh, because it looks like Brandon's um, ready for some more wheels. Is that right? Yep, yeah, absolutely. So it looks like we're pretty close to our, our final step on our first design which is to cut out the shape of our wheels. So I've just kind of prepared two comparably sized squares, um, but square wheels, as Kim will tell you, is not the best rover wheel. Um, so instead, what we're going to do is kind of figure out the best shape. Now, I've got a pretty smooth surface in front of me, and I worry that if I just make round wheels that they'll slip, right? They won't have enough traction to be able to hold on. So I'm gonna cut maybe something a little bit different instead. Um, and this is totally up to you guys. In fact, I would say explore with lots of different wheel types, wheel shapes. Um, so you can make little octagons like this, little like stop sign shaped ones, if you like. I've seen kids make uh, some really cool shapes like throwing stars or uh, kind of like, um, like little gears, right? Uh, lots and lots of different options. And this is actually, as uh, Lau can probably tell us more about, the wheel design, the evolution of wheels over the types of rovers has been you know, something that's really changed a lot over, over the last uh, few decades of, of rover design. Yeah, absolutely. And so, as Brandon mentioned, there are different designs that he has seen. There are different designs that I've seen. There are different designs that I use depending on what I'm going to be driving my rover on. So I've got kind of a, a smooth desk in front of me with a little bit of, of texture to it. So there, there might be some friction that the wheels experience as they're spinning. Um, that's different than if I put it on the floor, which is tile, or if I've got some carpet, and even the type of carpet will change uh, the wheel design. And so that's something we've got to consider when we're um, designing rover wheels that are going to Mars. And so if you take a look at this picture on the screen, you can see uh, an evolution of wheels, starting on the left-hand side, you've got wheels from the Sojourner rover, which landed on Mars in 1997, quite small, and they have, uh, it might be hard to see on the screen, but, but points, uh, almost like spikes sticking out to, to grip onto the surface. Then in the middle, you've got the wheels that we used on the Spirit and Opportunity rovers that landed in 2003. They're bigger because they are, um, they, they were put on a larger rover, and you can also see they have sort of like these metal ribs that go across um, from one side to the other. Then you've got a Curiosity wheel, which is the rover that landed in 2012, and totally different design. It's bigger because the, bigger's, the rover is bigger, and it also, instead of that straight line across the top, it has a zigzag pattern. We call those grousers, and those were used to uh, grip onto rocks that it might be climbing over. Now, with this newest rover, we have an even different design. So I'm gonna compare the Curiosity wheel that you see there on the right-hand side with the new wheel that is on the Perseverance rover. So if you take a look, you should see the side-by-side -side image of these two wheels. You'll notice, size-wise, they're pretty similar. You've got um, the, the, the roughly the same diameter, um, the width of the wheel on the Perseverance rover is a little narrower, uh, but instead of that zigzag grouser pattern, what you're seeing is a, it almost looks like the, the straight rib that went across the Spirit and Opportunity wheels, but there's a very gentle sine wave curve to it that, that allows us to drive um, over different, uh, uh, different terrains. And so that's something to keep in mind as you're, as you're building your wheel, what is it going to be driving over 
and what is going to be the best type of design around the edge of the wheel that's going to, to help you drive that way. Um, and so you may end up building a couple of different designs uh, and testing them out and seeing how they perform. So Brandon, how's your, how's your rover coming along? Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good. And I, I think uh, uh, Lyle is absolutely right. You know, there's the, you've got to have the right tool for the right job. Um, so if your wheel design doesn't work very well on one surface, that's totally fine. Maybe test it out on a few other surfaces and see if it um, performs a little bit better there. So we can test not just the wheel design, but where you're driving. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm looking like I'm ready for my first test. You can see what I did is I took my wheels here and I very, very carefully just punctured a hole in the middle of them. Uh, very careful not to uh, you know, poke my fingers on the other side. And then I attached them to my rear axle. So just kind of as a quick recap on everything we did, we took a piece of cardboard, we cut it, folded it up into thirds. And remember that this can be long or short, it can be tall, doesn't matter, totally up to you to test. We have our rear axle through the back. And as you can see, it's got a rubber band connected to it. And that's gonna be, give us our force if I want to kind of twist and try to charge up. Uh, you can see I closed the top of mine just so that my wheels don't rub on the, on the side of my rover. And then on my front axle, which is taped underneath, I've just got two little mints. They turn pretty easily. Uh, and yeah, I think I'm about ready to go, although I do see some, some concerns already. Uh, so I'm a little bit worried about how mine is going to go. I'm going to charge it up and get some twist here. Twist, twist, twist. Going to hold it, see how I do. Not so good, uh -oh. right? <laughs> <laughs> now, why? This is always how it goes. And I want to make sure that all of you guys understand I never get it right on the first time. Never. So I, I, I kind of saw some issues on what I think my biggest problem is, is that I didn't give enough room in between my pen and like on the cardboard. It feels kind of tight. It doesn't turn very freely. I really have to like turn it. And that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to revise. And this, this should happen every single time. Nobody ever gets it right the first time. So I want to kind of like loosen this space here where my pen is. And I think, I think Lyle was hinting earlier that he saw that as well, right? So I'm just going to kind of like twist this and give it some room. And then I want to like test again to see when I charge it, does it spin? Oh, that looks a little bit better now, right? So again, your first model will never, ever be your best model. But now that I've kind of loosened this space in here, I can see my pen is turning a little bit more. Maybe I'm ready to give it another try. Let's get these on. Let's charge it up a little bit, see how we do. And see if my wheels turn this time. Oh, a little bit. Not great. Maybe it needs a little bit more. Let's try one more time. You know, it's, it's really interesting, Brandon, because as you're making the adjustments, I'm thinking to myself, what does my rover have that's similar to yours, and do I need to make some similar adjustments as well? So it's not just testing that you do. You can also learn from uh, other designs that you've seen. Um, in fact, this design that we started off with, we kind of gave you a basic design that you have to improve upon. And so um, being able to look at previous designs can be, can be really helpful as well. How's, how's yours going, Brandon? Uh, I think I think we're about we're getting ready there. Now I'm starting to see some wheel movement. Uh, so I think this might be this might be ready to drive a little. And again, I don't think it's ready for, for quite the big show, but I think it could maybe cover a little bit of ground. So I'm seeing some wheel movement. Let's give it a shot. Oh, it took took a couple steps. Needs a little bit of a boost. There we go. Right? Needs a you got to be behind it and. A little bit. Um, I'm seeing a little problem on my front axle too, but let's give this one more test. Oh, I see. Okay. So now I see that I've got great movement here. My wheels can charge 
and spin. So I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, but they're kind of clicking on the side here. I see. So Brandon, so what I'm going to do is... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean sorry. to interrupt. Go ahead. I'm just going to brace this so that these sides here don't drag here. And that, then I'm going to feel pretty confident. I think this guy could take on Lyles. Let's see. Let's see. I got some nice spacing here in between my wheels and the body. I charge up. Oh, let's go. That feels good. Let's see if I can make it from one end to the other. Oh, <laughs> pretty nice. Pretty nice. Third time's the charm. All right. So certainly, Lyle and I are going to have to do a little race later. But you can see how it takes it takes some time, right? So don't get frustrated if your first one's not good. Um, you know, learn a little bit from it. See what little mistakes you can make. I've seen some really, really genius adaptations and revisions from young students. Um, some ideas that I thought were really good were I've seen kids add a little bit of mass um, and make the, making this a little bit heavier allows the wheels to kind of grip the ground a little bit better. And I've also seen a really, really smart idea where students actually doubled up their wheels. So maybe if you have a little bit more area of your wheel, wider wheels touching the ground, you can drive a little bit better too. Um, so many great ideas, no wrong answers. If it gets a little bit worse, that's actually a learning opportunity as well. So take that as a chance to say, oh, what, what did I do? How can I undo it? And, uh, and kind of continue to iterate and keep making your design better and better. I think that's a really great point. And I have never thought of doubling up the wheels, but it makes perfect sense. Um, I have two bicycles at home. One is a road bike with very skinny tires, and one is a mountain bike with pretty fat tires. And I could not take my skinny tired road bike on a trail uh, that is dirt. It would just, it would spin around and I'd probably fall over. So um, it's, it's pretty useful to think about inspiration from outside of just the robotic world. Um, where might you find good designs that can help you um, improve your design for whatever it is that you're, you're building? I've, I've heard of inspiration coming from tomato cages. Um, from gardeners and just all sorts of different places where people can get good ideas for maybe something that you don't think about going to Mars but can actually uh, help out. So um, what I want to do because Brandon I know you have had a chance to improve your rover and definitely I, I thought I was going to win at first when your rover didn't move at all. Um, I'm less confident now but what I want to do is I want to show a video of the first test drive that we did of our rover as well. You can see it's moving very very slow. This is this is about top speed of the rover. It does not move very fast. And all of the engineers that you see crawling around on the floor there, checking the wheels, making sure everything is moving the way that it's supposed to, just like Brandon said, uh, his wheel was kind of bumping into the body of his rover. We want to make sure that there are no cables that are getting um, snagged by the wheels as they move. We want to make sure that everything is working just as it should. And here you can see an example of the way that those six wheels are really good at moving over obstacles rather than the four wheels. Fortunately, we're driving over flat surfaces, so we don't necessarily have to worry about that. Um, but again, test, test, test. That's what we're, we're doing here. We want to make sure that we get it working right before we send it off to Mars. So um, Brandon, uh, what do you think? Is it, is it time to, whoops, I think I just clicked the wrong button. Let me try that again. Uh, Brandon, let's get you back on the screen here. Um, what do you think? Are we ready to go? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I see a, a couple of great student questions. Um, someone asked as we were building, how do you find the center of the wheel? And that's a great question. You can see I kind of just eyeballed mine and that maybe wasn't the best scientific play there. Um, so what you can do is take a ruler and kind of make uh, straight lines across your wheel and then look for where that point of intersection is in between all of them. That can give you a point where the center is. Uh, another good tip is once you find it for one, you might want to put your two wheels on top of each other and kind of create a hole through both at the same time, as long as you're safe about it. That way you know that it's not in the middle on one and maybe a little off center on the other. Um, 
And uh, another good question came in. Uh, maybe Lau wants to take this one. Um, the question is, obviously, the, the wheels uh, on our rover are not quite the, the material that are, are being used on the actual rover. Uh, so what, what material are we using on the actual rover wheels? Uh, that's a great question. So um, what I want to do is I want to pull up that picture again that shows the side-by-side -side comparison of the Curiosity wheel and the Perseverance wheel so that I can talk a little bit about what you're seeing there. So that black part of the wheel, that is aluminum. And usually when we think about aluminum, we think about aluminum cans, and um, that's not the color of an aluminum can. Um, but we start with a big block of aluminum. You saw in the video earlier, we actually carve out the wheel from an entire block of aluminum. That way there aren't any um, weak spots where we might have had to weld pieces together. So we take a big block of aluminum, we cut out the wheel, and then we, uh, I believe it's a process called anodization where we, we coat the wheel so that it has this black appearance to it. And um, that does a couple different things. It actually will help absorb a little bit of heat from the sun on Mars where it gets very, very cold and just does a little bit more of um, keeping that wheel motor warm so that the rover doesn't have to add even more energy to keep the, the wheel energy. We get a little bit of that, that solar energy. Then on the inside, there are those bowed structures, those sort of rounded curved pieces. Those are actually titanium, and they're, uh, they're in there, and they're not aluminum because that's kind of like an inner wheel suspension system. Um, they flex a little bit so that as the rock uh, excuse me, as the rover um, maybe, well, first of all, when it lands on the surface, um, it's coming down at a few miles per hour, and it's 2,000 pounds. So there's a good amount of force that's being put on those wheels. And so those titanium flexures, uh, they, they, they take some of that energy, and they absorb some of it. And then as we're going over rocks, they'll absorb some of that energy too. So um, titanium and aluminum is mostly what you're looking at there. Um, great question. Yeah, not what we're going to use for our cardboard rovers. Um, but it's still a great way that we can um, look at different designs uh, through cardboard. We even 3D print different test uh, wheels here uh, at JPL so that we don't have to cut out a big block of aluminum every time we want to look at a full-size design and, and see what it, it might need. So um, lots of different ways that we can check these wheel designs. Great question. Let's see here. Um, Brandon, I was pulling up some, some videos, and I didn't get a chance to look up another question. Did you have one that you saw that we might want to take again? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, another really good question is, uh, obviously, as you mentioned, you know, we kind of have four wheels. Only really two of them are hooked up to uh, the ability to drive. We have a two-wheel drive vehicle here. Um, are the six wheels on the actual rover um, set to be able to move and drive independently? Yeah, so that's another great question. And I'm going to bring up that test video again of the rover driving, because one of the things that you can see in that is the way that it um, moves around. Let me just fast forward to a different part of the video where the wheel, there we go. Let me click play here. Here you can see the wheels have actually rotated. So independent motors on the outsides that will um, allow those four corner wheels to turn. Uh, and when I say turn, I mean turn like they're, they're turning the rover to move in a different direction. Um, but then uh, we've got motors within each wheel that allow it to turn as well. So yeah, absolutely. Um, more than just one way to drive these wheels. Um, the rover can drive in reverse, it can drive in forward, and it can rotate in that um, 360 degree pattern that we saw. Um, another really good question came in, and I think we, we kind of touched on this a, a bit, but it's a great great thing to spell out. We talked about the right tool for the right job and how the wheels for the Mars rover have changed. But, you know, potentially we could send rovers to other planets or moons or, or places in our solar system. Um, so can you kind of comment just one more time about how it is that the wheels have improved and why we change the wheel design for different, uh, different locations. Sure, absolutely. So going back to the lunar rovers that we were sending to the moon, uh, they had completely different wheels. Um, they were designed to drive people around on the moon, and they were much bigger vehicles. Those were four-wheeled vehicles, and they had, uh, I don't have any pictures or images of them, but you can probably do an internet search for lunar rover wheels, and what you'll see are these, they look 
like the shape of a traditional tire, but they're made out of metal. And that allowed them to not pop a tire on the moon, which would really cause some problems. Um, it also made it so that they weren't using material like rubber that would degrade in the, the high radiation environment of the moon. Um, and so you'll see those wheel designs are really good for moving around in the, the powdery surface of the moon. Um, and then going to Mars, we've got different requirements for those, those different wheels again. So yeah, depending on where you're going, um, we're probably going to be sticking with aluminum wheels because we know that they work well. Uh, but we do have to make changes. Um, even the, the rover design, uh, the wheel design for the Curiosity wheel, we realized this isn't the best design, and so we made some improvements to it for the Perseverance rover. Yeah, and wheels are, of course, only one mode of locomotion, right? Uh, if you think about things like uh, the gecko bot or, you know, uh, robots that, like, uh, squeeze and then bounce in order to move. Uh, so, you know, a rover is really only one means of driving around. Uh, we could see many, many new technologies in, in the future for how it is we move around different surfaces, uh, whether those are, you know, uh, sandy worlds or icy worlds or so forth. So uh, be creative. Feel free to start here. This is kind of uh, the, the, the uh, rover of the present, um, but feel free to explore ideas of, of what rovers of the future might look like as well. Um, so I'm guessing uh, we're just about out of time. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much for dialing in with us today. Uh, special thanks to uh, Lyle for joining us from the studio and designing a rover alongside us. Uh, a couple of people are asking online if this is going to be available afterwards, and it will. Please uh, check out uh, the Teaching Space website and the uh, NASA Education website, where you can see these recordings and ones like it. And if you uh, followed along with us, or if you're following along at a later time, and you want to send us your submissions, show us your awesome rover work, you can submit that to us at the student showcase at the Mission to Mars Student Challenge. So share all your awesome work with us. Let's see what cool wheel designs you guys came up with. And thank you guys so much for joining us today. Happy building on your rovers. Take care. Bye, everybody. <laughs>